Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to be looking at a Nintendo GameCube, which doesn't display on a TV, and also it doesn't seem to spin up the discs. So uh, when I turn it on, it does something on the TV, but yet it's just a black screen. So this was sent in by a viewer and a Patreon named Hayley. And it says here, thanks again for taking a look at the GameCube. The Beats Pill was a really interesting video. Hayley sent in a little red Beats Pill. I don't know, about six months ago or something? Especially seeing how badly someone had refurbed it before. Hopefully the GameCube will be a more interesting fix. It was working perfectly when stored about three years ago, and now it's dead. Well, that's interesting, because what's happened in the storage to stop it from working? It says, the orange power light illuminates, the fan spins, but it doesn't attempt to read any discs or display to the TV. I've already swapped the power distribution board from my other working GameCube, and sadly the problem remains, so I suspect there will be a fault on the main board somewhere. Ooh. I hope you enjoy, and thanks again for making these videos. Many thanks, Hayley. Well, many thanks to you, Hayley. So, uh, I don't know, let's take it over to the uh, the mat and see if we can work out what's going on. When I plug it into this one here, the TV and everything is working, so let me just uh, turn this one off. Turn this on here. Who remembers this sound? <laughs> How clean is that? That really is just the... Uh, as clean as clean gets. Right, so uh, yeah, you can see it's not the TV, it's not the cable or anything like that, it's definitely something in here. Let's get started. So from memory, this not mellow yellow mat is Haley's favorite, hence the reason it's come out. But I might only be able to keep it out for a short amount of time, depending on how my eyes cope. Now, the uh, I need a uh, game bit driver, but the iFixit toolkit here is a little bit tight. So uh, I've taken another one out here. I'm thinking, it can't be anything too major, can it? If it was working before it was stored. This thing looks to be in very good condition. Lovely. Power distribution board, I wonder what that is. No, the power button's working, but it's not outputting anything. So really we need to get to this board here with the output on. So I suppose it's just gonna be a case of undoing a load of screws until we uh, till we see what's going on. So I can see four screws down here, a load of screws around the edge. Let's undo everything. So although it is compact, it seems a very nice thing to take apart, and it seems easy to swap parts over with another working one. If you had a problem with your controllers, you can swap the controller board over at the front very easily, the power switch is easy to get to, the disk drive on top is easy enough to get to, there's a separate power distribution board. So all in all, it looks like a very repairable item. Ah, so this must be the power distribution board. Interesting. Right, okay. Well, we kind of know it's not that, or do we know it's not that? So it brings the power in from the connector at the back here into here. And I presume this here is how it comes up to here. So could it be corrosion or something on here? Let's look closely in here. It looks very clean. I think this is going to be difficult. You never know. I might be lucky. It might be just uh, dodgy capacitors or something like that. It's just a bit weird how it was working fine. Also, that, f uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to yank that up. Don't want to cause damage to the chips there because they look like, are they BGA chips? Hard to tell. Yeah, they are, that's annoying. I can see a load of balls, look at all them. Right, I'm gonna be careful with that. I wonder, was it dropped? I wonder if pressure was put down, would it start working? Let's see if that's the case. So now, what do I do to the display? Do I need to have the front connected? Do I need to have this connected here? I would say I don't. So let's bring it back in the other room, put pressure down here, see if it starts working, because it could be a BGA problem. So let's put some pressure down here. Turn it on. No, but you see, it does make that little glitch for a second. No, okay, right, let's uh, get the multimeter out. I think I'm just gonna check for shorts and the caps to begin with. First of all, I suppose we'll have a visual inspection 
I mean, this has been changed down here, so it shouldn't be anything on that. And also, it is providing power. Unless, of course, this provides loads of different powers and it's not getting some of them. Because look, can you see we've got three inductors here? Or no, maybe four. So maybe there is actually four different power supplies, because otherwise, why would it, we have so many pins? So maybe it's giving power to like the CPU, but not the GPU. It's possible, isn't it? Or, or maybe something shorted on here. Let's get the multimeter out into continuity. So I'm just going one side and the other side of the capacitors. Is that that? Yep. Well, there's no shorts there, and those ones. What have we got here? If my meter was to beep, obviously I would then put it onto ohms test. Because, for example, there, can you see that's 31 ohms, yeah? So it's beeping there, beeping there, but that cap isn't short. Because, look, if I go here, go on this side. So that's the ground side because it's less than 1 ohm. My leads are behaving themselves. You can see here, less than 1 ohm. And if I go this side, that is 31 ohms. So that's definitely not a short. But it's just nice sometimes to just do this without having to look at the meter constantly. Right, I don't think it's going to be something really straightforward like a capacitor. Should we see fuses, where the fuses might come onto the board? So that plugs in here, doesn't it? So surely there should be fuses around here. Let's zoom in. So this looks like the connector coming in. FIL. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if it is a fuse, but there's continuity through it. Right, so there's nothing there, nothing obvious there. There's loads here. Maybe they're not. They might be just some sort of inductors. Yeah, they're not fuses, they're everywhere. They're just inductors, aren't they? Oh, 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 we found something. We found something, we found something. Just shows you visual inspection, the most important. Look here, look at that. And this board looks immaculate, you'd never expect that. You would never expect that. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, we have corrosion. I would say that that has gone here. Let's just see if we've got uh, continuity from here to here. Apologies about the wobbles because I'm so zoomed in. I mean, look at the size of my finger. Right, okay, now where do you go to? This looks like it's under. Oh, excellent, check this out. So it looks like we've got three chips under here, doesn't it? I'm not going to take it off, but it looks like we've got a chip here and a chip here and two chips. One second. Two smaller chips here. So would it be something like, you know, like GPU, CPU, and maybe some sort of RAM? And if this is if this is the GPU here, if that is where the uh, it's so small I've lost where I was. Oh no, oh no, I've lost where the corrosion was. Here. Phew. It's here. So that's quite likely that it's the GPU because it's a bit smaller than the CPU. That's what I'm thinking rather than having, you know, like modern stuff has like an APU, which is the graphics and the computer chip all combined into one. But I'd say these are going to be separate here. Right, okay. Let's uh, see where that one goes to. So it's the one above where my probe is. Above, above. Above, 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 above.
Yes, it's there. It's not there. Hallelujah. Right. Well, I think because this is an honest fault, in other words, it's not one that's gone through 10 repair shops. Look at that. Can you see there's no continuity? But yet when I go here, underneath somewhere, I can't remember where it was now. There. You can see I have got continuity. There. Let's give that a good clean up. I think that's going to be the only fault on this. Famous last words. Now it's weird how water just got sat on that little bit there. Should we have a little look around elsewhere, see if there's anything else? Right, I haven't gone through every single part of it, but I just think that uh, I think that's just going to be it. Right, let's get some IPA, clean it up, and hopefully the wire itself will be intact because uh, otherwise that's going to be a night. That's going to go to a BGA. You can see this is the ball grid array un underneath, can't you? Look here. All the way across here, this is the ball grid array. So this is going to be it underneath the other side. So there might well be a touch of corrosion on the other side. I just think I might be asking for trouble going, taking this off. So it's here. Let's just see where that is here around about under here. I'm just going to use my eye loop and look in there. Right, it's very hard to see. I mean, the balls here look very clean on these bits. They look nice and silvery. You can see them there. It's very hard to see. I don't know whether the corrosion hit here and seeped underneath or whether it came from this side. I suppose, would we have a better idea if... One second. How does this sit in here? So the corrosion is here. This sits in here. Corrosion is here, it sits here, so the corrosion is, could, I don't know how corrosion got in there unless it worked its way up through the bottom somehow, it's very bizarre, because there's no markings here at all, yeah, not sure, now I don't know where those bits went, oh they're for screws aren't they, oh yeah here, underneath here, right I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%, give it a nice scrub, I'm worried now that there's going to be none of that via left. Oh. Otherwise it means trying to either take the chip off, which is going to be a nightmare, or trying to, I don't know, maybe on the other side it goes to the ball, it might go on somewhere else that I might be able to pick it up and bring it back through to here. That's a bit worrying. Via looks like it's been completely eaten away. Mind you, if there was a ball under here, I wonder would I be able to... Uh, I've got a tiny bit of wire and heated up from this side. I wonder would the heat travel through the wire into the solder ball and slightly melt the solder ball if I used as thick a wire as I could. That might be an option. Like if you've got a little needle, heated up a needle, pointed it, shoved it through there. Look at the rust. If I see any bit of coppery gold, I'll be happy. Look at that. I don't think there's anything there. Right, I'm going to have to look under the microscope. This is too... Uh I just can't see anything, it just looks like brown circuit board. I'll tell you what we could do, see if there's a diode reading. Because if it was just circuit board not doing anything, there wouldn't be a diode reading, would there? So let's go to here, red probe to ground. Here. Now, let's go to the wire next to it. So we've got a reading there, so that's the ground. Reading there. Reading here. Now on to R1. That's worrying. Can you see there's just nothing? Look. Completely open. Yeah, same as not doing anything. Yet when I go to the other ones around it, it's giving me a reading. So if there was a slither of gold plate in there or a little bit of copper, we would get some kind of reading. 
And my one here, nothing. Oh no, what disaster. What a disaster. Right, okay, let's look under the microscope. It looks like I am gonna to have to try to force these off. Maybe a bit of heat and they might come off. I'm just worried because it's ball grid array that I might end up damaging you know, the, the balls when I lift this off because it's gonna be a lot of surface tension on that. So that's a real shame because even if there was just a tiny bit of copper there, then I could get solder onto it and then it's gonna make a connection. It doesn't exactly look like a massive thick power rail. It's just gonna be a little data rail. So any sort of connection would have probably been fine, but there's nothing there whatsoever. Now this might look a bit aggressive here because it looks like I've gone straight for a drill. <laughs> but uh, annoyingly, this is the second video in a row where I've used my microscope and the data is corrupted. It's so irritating because I need to go through data recovery and it takes hours to get the data back again so i don't know i'm using sandisk i never have a problem with sandisk i've been using sandisk in my video camera for absolutely ages since i started doing youtube and i've never had an sd card fail on me well that's a lie i did actually get one new that didn't work from new but uh, for some reason when I put it into the microscope, it's failed on me. So I have bought some more SD cards. I'm not risking this one again. I am tempted just to completely format it, not a quick one, but a complete format, see if it will fix it or not, because the SD card's not old, it's only a few months old, but I, I can't risk it, because it's just, it's infuriating. Basically, there's a whole section that I can't get back via data recovery that shows me just gently with the probe to begin with, scraping the via, and all that's coming out is the kind of brown, uh, fiberglass part off the board rather than the actual uh, you know rather than the via so yeah I'm using a drill bit here what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to make the hole right the way through the board so I can touch the ball on the other side now these vias might not line up dead on the ball but they just seem to be I can't see any vias on the top of the board they seem to be you know where all the balls are so I'm thinking the balls must be right next to these vias now at this point in the video I'm thinking that basically it's just a top and a bottom layer board so I'm trying to get through with the drill bit in order to make contact to the ball on the other side the weird thing is I'm on this for absolutely ages and it doesn't matter how much I go through with my drill bit I'm never getting a diode reading so I'm going to try now to find a bit of footage that is working from later on where eventually I start to get a diode reading. The weird thing is, it's not just one diode reading I'm getting, I'm getting a good diode reading, which looks like data, like a 0.35, and I'm also getting a complete ground as well. So yeah, it's gone from basically looking completely fixable to now not looking fixable whatsoever. But let's pick up the video when I'm a little bit further on in to the scraping through. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm uh, beyond gutted. I was sure it was just a top layer and bottom layer board. It's not. Look at this website here, forums.modretro.com. It's about, you know, when people trim down circuit boards to maybe do portable versions of consoles like the GameCube. It says here, the GameCube main board is a four layered PCB. I'm absolutely gutted because now I'm not actually gonna know whether or not I've gone through a middle layer you know because it's four layers yeah so imagine this now i've gone through normally there'd be a via going from here to here which is great you know that there's going to be nothing else going through that via you know so so imagine if there was traces they'd have to at least be either side of that via yeah like that but because i've made the hole much bigger you know i've made it like that big now these traces could now be cut do you see what i mean these traces might now be cut. I'm hoping, because of the age of it, that maybe things are a bit spaced out a bit more, and they're not gonna be like tiny, tiny vias just running all, uh, sorry, tiny tracks running next to each other mid-layer. So there's a chance I might still be okay. Let's go back over to the microscope. It's a fairly big hole now, isn't it? Do you know, if I'd known that from the beginning, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have gone through, I would have taken off the, the heat sink and maybe try to get a wire just to the ball on the edge. But now this is hindsight, you see, I never knew. I'm gonna get crucified, I know I'm gonna get crucified in the comments section. Maybe, maybe deservedly so. Uh, right, okay. At least I show my errors. Not everyone does. Right, can you see my multimeter? So what we got going on here now, let's, I'll tell you what we'll do. 
what happens if we just go on the layers here? Is anything coming up at all? I'm just trying to go across the layers. That's good news. There's nothing coming up. Right, now. Let's go down to try and touch the ball. Right, so we've got a short there. That's ground. But then we've got our circuit there. Slightly off to the left hand side. Oh, I wish I could see a bright ball going through here, but I can't. You can see it's, it's quite far away. Uh, I wonder if I was to now get this thicker wire. I wonder if, uh, yeah, the thicker wire. I wonder if I was to jab that in there. Is there a way I could miss the ground plane? If I was to go in, for example, at that angle there. Let me try to strip off with the soldering iron a little bit of the enamel of this one here, the 03 millimeter. The problem I've got now is that even if I do get this working, which would be a bit of a miracle, I'm not going to know if it's going to be working fully. Do you see what I mean? Like, would there be certain games where certain parts of that GPU would uh, would not work? You know. Because beforehand it was a bit of a corrosion. If I had just fixed up the wire, if there was a bit of fire left, I could have just run a wire and then I'd safely know that I've fixed it. But right now, even if I do get a picture on the screen, I'm not really going to feel comfortable because I'm not going to know whether or not it's going to play every single game, you know? Right, let me just see if I was to put it in at that angle in, in here. Gotta be careful now, because any solder on my soldering iron is gonna bridge up between the layers, isn't it? Not sure if this heat's gonna travel down into the ball, I think it's unlikely. Let me cut the wire so the heat doesn't travel all the way down it. Right, let's just see if that's giving me any reading. Nah, it's not doing anything. No. Just want to cover the end of the wire as solder. Right, there we go. That's a healthy bit of solder on that there now. Let's see if there's any way I can get that to melt into the ball. No way. Oh my word. No way. It's actually on there. Oh my word. I wonder should I just try it. Will it blow up? You know what I mean? Will it... Uh, let's get it on. So let's try to get this onto here. Can you believe that? How fluky was that? I remember when I was filming it, I thought, oh, the wire looked like it got sucked down into the hole. And sure enough, when I was editing it there, when I put the soldering iron on its side, just shows you what a difference a bit of solder actually makes on the wire. Then the wire just got sucked down into it. And I presume into the correct ball. I mean, 
I don't know that, but the thing is, these balls do look like they're quite spaced out. It's not like the Nintendo Switch or maybe like a PlayStation 4 or 5, etc. These really do look very spaced out. So the odds of me having that short bit of wire going into another ball is very slim because I've gone down the hole where the original 40 via was. So yeah, I can't believe I've somehow missed the ground planes in the middle. Because remember, I thought this was just a two-layer ball, top and bottom. Now there's two layers in the middle. I'm amazed that I've managed to miss the grounds in those layers but yeah according to the multimeter I have missed it so now what I have to do is I have to make good I already knew when I was doing the drill that I was going to damage the little trace that the little ground trace that just runs above the damaged fire but also one bit that was cut from the video because I lost the footage on the uh microscope thank you very much was that uh, they're all reading the others are reading i think it was 0.38 and on my corroded track it was reading 0.35 so what i was worried about is what happens if the ball that i want to attach to doesn't read anything so i wanted to cut another data trace so you know just a via next to it not a power one but a data one not a ground one and uh, sure enough when i cut the trace the chip itself is reading 0.38 and the trace itself was 0.35 so i now know that the chip has to have some diode reading hence the reason i persevered with drilling through the hole to try to locate the ball on the underneath anyway enough off this close-up soldering because it's all over the place anyway let me show you the finished result and then we can test it Right, first of all, let's just check for shorts. So, here, 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 go into there, no, go to there, no, that goes to there, this one is going to here, this one is going to be going down to here, no shorts. Right, okay, let's now do diode reading. And we have got, hopefully, this is intact 0.35. 0.35 really if I was reading against a known working board it'd be proper 0.35 this is going to be ground this is going to be ground this one now is the one I've been working on 0.35 that's amazing that's the same as the others this one here 0.35 this one here 0.35 this one here 0.35 thing is though just because it's 0.35 it doesn't mean that this 0.35 isn't connected to one of the other 0.35s but it's looking there uh, it's looking more hopeful than it did a while ago. So let's put it back together and then if miraculously it is working, I can flood this area with solder mask so that none of these wires are going to wobble or move anywhere and also to give them a bit more strength. But they are, although it looks a mess, they are soldered. You need to remember, this is tiny. It's tiny work working on. That's my finger now, yeah? So you can see how small it is. So I'm just putting it back together enough to test. I'm not going to put any solder mask on it just yet because it might not work but I'm going to put a little bit of captain tape just on the repair work that I've done so it doesn't short against anything on the case. While we're doing all that, we'll give a shout out to the my mate Vince Massive, the members this month are kipdigital.com, Kip Hakes and Max Rockatansky, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeeps.com, DJVG, Pixie, Anthony Dean, Baza2, Russ Madison, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund and Soul Reaver 555 So many thanks to each and every one of you. Now let's see if this GameCube is working on the TV or will it still produce a black screen and no disc spin? This feels like an old video for me because uh, often I sort of think, yeah, I think it is gonna work, but with this one, I really don't know. So I think it will be a nice surprise if it does suddenly start working. Okay, here goes. What do you think, yes or no? Come on now, I'm gonna say yes. You ready? Please show something, come on. Select your language, oh my word. I haven't got a, a controller, I don't know where my controllers are. Wow, I've never seen that before, that must be when, okay. Can you believe that? Imagine if I've crossed some wires up and somehow I've gone into some weird menu. Okay, let me go get a controller. Unbelievable. Let's see what it does now. Okay, how are you going to move? Yes, you are. Oh, listen to that. Oh, you beauty. You beauty. Now, are you going to spin up? You must first set the calendar and other options. Press any button. Maybe that little battery here has failed. Sounds lovely. Let me see if anything's going to load up. 
if I hold down, I suppose I have to hold down this and these at the back. Yes, look at that. Oh, and I can see the little red laser moving. Look at that, can you see the red laser moving? Let me bring the camera forward, that's worthy. You'll see it shining through and moving around the place. Ready, so I'm gonna that, that, and I'm gonna turn it on. Can you see the red laser? Look at it, it's good, isn't it? Now, is it gonna automatically start? Result, can you hear that? Brilliant, I can't move the camera now. Right, I am going to, just gonna let go of that. The disc cover is open. Well, it did say the disc cover's open. I think it's uh, because I let go of them all at the same time, it probably threw a wobbly. Result, right, let's put some uh, solder mask on that, get it back together. I think this is gonna be working okay. That is an absolute miracle. Can't quite believe that that actually works. What are the odds of that? Now, like I said earlier, maybe, for example, if I was to short two things together there, that there might be a certain game that wouldn't work that uses different pins. But you know what? I don't think so. I think I just got lucky. I think I went all the way through and I presume if I'd done, done that on maybe a Nintendo Switch or something, then I would have probably gone through loads of layers, uh, loads of data lines mid layer but in this one maybe it's all quite spaced out maybe there's not a huge amount happening maybe it's just some of the bigger power ones that are going through the middle layers but i have i really haven't got a clue part of me is curious about if there is water damage up top it's moving easy now because it's heated itself up from when it was just on oh yes right now like, oh so they're big pads they're not it's not thermal paste it's nice big pads so let me just see now if because i know a lot of you are going to be curious where did i fix it again here oh so it's under this ibm one let's see what this ibm one is i presume this is the graphics chip well that's interesting i would have thought the bigger one would have been a cpu and that would have been a gpu but no this ibm one is the cpu so that's kind of interesting right let me just have a little look here see what's going on see if we can see any corrosion just here I can see my wire and I can see the ball, I think. Wow, okay, let's see if we can zoom in. Right, so I don't want to tempt fate by whacking anything, but this is it here. It all looks a bit of a mess. What's this here? Let's get rid of that. Well, I did get on the ball, because you can see the wire just here. I don't want to touch it, but you can see, and it does look melted. But I got very lucky. Look how spaced out the balls are. They're massively spaced out. In fact, this would be a bit of a dream one to uh, re-ball, because it would be, I think, doable. Wow. Oh, well, there we go. You can see that I broke through the board there. Excellent. I don't think there's gonna be much corrosion there. Should I put a little bit of IPA this side or is that tempting fate? Uh, I think I will put a little bit just in case there was a tiny bit of corrosion. Well, I'm glad I checked that side, but you can see there's not a huge amount of corrosion in this area here. In fact, you can't see any corrosion. So I think somehow it did end up coming on the, the, the back part here. Right, let's get some solder mask on here. I didn't dream the heat sink would come off so easy. If I did, I would have done it at the very beginning. I would have just heated it up with my hot air and then it would have come off. Just from the GameCube being on, it generated enough heat to just slide that heat sink right off. Definitely no damage to the balls. It just twisted right off, no bother at all. Anyway, it's all a bit of a learning curve. Next time I work on a GameCube, if I work on a GameCube, I will be a lot wiser. So I'm just going to put a bit of solder mask on this. I have to put the UV light on it for around 10, 15, 20 minutes. Because I put it on quite thick, I then sort of break the surface to let a little bit of the underneath because whenever I do solder mask it always creates a bit of a skin on top it's still wet underneath so I just pierce the surface a little bit let the underneath ooze out a bit and then I put the light on it again and that way then it should also thicken up what's underneath as well so next time you see this now it will have the solder mask done and it will be back together and we'll end the video playing a little bit of Mario Kart
Amazingly, it all appears to be working. So I've just set the calendar. By default, it was at 2066, which I thought was odd. You think it would be whenever this came out would be the default, but no, it was uh, very strange. Anyway, I've unplugged it for a while because I want to see if that battery's got any charge in it because I have just been, I haven't played it much. I've just done one round of Mario Kart. Right, let's plug it in now, see if I still have to do the calendar. In fact, let me, oh no. I thought we'd go straight to the game. Let's see if it makes me do the calendar. No, straight into the game. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, let me just check the calendar. Let me uh, just pop that open. Reset that. Such nice sound effects on this. Calendar. There we go. 3rd of the 12th, Sunday. And the correct time as well. So it looks like that's all good. Right, so... Uh, yeah, that's really, uh, really, really interesting one. I don't know how anybody else would have gone about that. Would you have taken, I mean, a better job clearly is to take the chip off. And then I suppose the balls are big enough that you could have then ran a wire through the board there. You know what I mean? Put a wire through the wire and just solder it up underneath. And then you wouldn't have that mess that I created. But saying that, then you've got to get involved in a reball. And you know that's quite a lot of hours work doing that. But I suppose if you were used to stencils and if you were used to solder paste, then maybe you could knock that chip out in about an hour which would have been a better job because I spent around about that much time trying to drill through the board and getting a wire through it. Also, I don't know how stable it's going to be, meaning that if you were to drop this, would that wire come off? From what I could see, it looked like the wire was soldered to the ball. I did have the soldering iron through there for quite a long time, so I'm sure it probably did reflow the ball on the bottom of the chip. And I've covered it in solder, but solder mask, so I'm happy that I think it will be a lasting fix, but this could never be sold as a fully working GameCube, even though it looks to be fully working because of what's happened on the inside of it. But uh, yeah, but it appears to be working just fine. So for a video, I'm very, very happy with it. But I'd be interested to see how somebody else would have gone about fixing it. Would you have also tried to drill through or would you have taken the chip off and done a reball? I don't think the soldering iron would have been small enough to get under the chip to wire to the ball. And it didn't look like there was any traces on the top where it said Nintendo on the circuit board. So I think the only way to do it is to do what I did or to go and re-ball the chip. The thing is, what I did was very risky because it's a multi-layer board. Anyway, massive thanks to Hayley for sending this in to me. I personally think it's been an interesting video and hope you've enjoyed it too. I'm going to end with a little bit of gameplay while the credits are running. So uh, yeah, thank you so much and I will see you all very soon. Look after yourselves. Not great.